Thank you very much. Um, just a little side promotion um, before I start. This is actually my, my third talk of the day. This morning I was at, um, at one of these eight university uh, institutions to give part of my, my speech, my talk. Um, if you have not been able to make it, you, you can still uh, follow this because then later on the recording will be, uh, put, uh, will be placed on the PolyUse website and uh, so there will be a lot of great things there. If you, you want to ever go revisit the video today, there you have it. Uh, my, my part is the last part, by the way. So, <laughs> so just let you know. All right. And um, yep. So that's that. And I point that out because because the, the eight university sharing session this morning was uh, obviously AI gener uh, AI uh, focus, uh, and so is the same for this talk, um, which I hope you don't mind, because oh, uh, you know, it's been quite a lot of AI already. Um, so the outline of this talk basically it's uh, like a sh like a summary of my publication my recent publication here uh, on the computers and education open. If you would like to read the whole thing, that's the, that's the QR code. It's free download, um, so feel free to uh, scan the QR code and download a copy. Otherwise, it will be just as good uh, attending this talk because I'll be summarizing all of that finding in a in a, in a very unpacked kind of way. So it's not going to be too difficult. Right, uh, overview, project uh, objectives, followed by why a uh, scoping review, then is the Prisma scoping review framework, then findings and limitations, then the conclusion. So very, very simple uh, outline. Okay, so project objectives, it's, well, to provide an overview of the current state of research because uh, Gen AI is still very new. We don't know what we don't know. We don't. We don't even know what we know. So that's why I wanted to to, to conduct this study um, to identify the research gap and future directions. Uh, as you can see here, no, normally when we conduct the research, we already know the research gap. But uh, for scoping review, it's because you know why we do scoping review is because we don't even know the the research gap. Like we don't know where it is. Um, think about scoping review when. Uh, when do we do scoping review? Usually at the early stage of development of some technology or something. Uh, another when, uh, when there is no specific research questions. So I just come like, I want to know more about it. Let's, let's, let's find out what we don't know, what we do know. And then last one is looking for, answer, uh, looking for answers for much broader questions. Okay. Uh, what are the broader questions? Well, there are two here. What is the nature of, ev of the evidence for this intervention, for example? Like this intervention meaning Gen AI. Uh, in this case, what is known about this concept? Okay, so these are the more broader questions that normally people ask in the, uh, for when they conduct a scoping review. Hello, thanks for coming. Hope you don't mind, it's me again. <laughs> right, uh, so I want to introduce to you the Prisma uh, framework for scoping review. Uh, it's this particular table here, but uh, before that, just some review questions. Now, the difference between normal, like, uh, systematic studies or systematic review and a scoping review is systematic reviews you, you say you have research questions so because you know what they are but scoping review you don't know what the research, research questions are so we say we call them review questions why are we reviewing this literature okay so the first one is uh, why are the, well, what are the key terms surrounding the use of Gen AI in language education specifically number two uh, what language studies and education levels are most researched at, at this time this period of time now, 3A, what are the specific areas of research, for example, or that is uh, language learning, language skills that have been investigated, what have been done in relation to the use of Gen AI. Uh, 3B, what are the attitudes towards the use of Gen AI in language teaching and learning, meaning like are the people positive or negative about it or neutral? Um, what are the potential benefits and challenges of using Gen AI in language teaching specifically? Okay, right. Uh, so here's the, the breakdown of the uh, Prisma framework. It's actually very, very easy. If you want to do scoping review of Prisma, you just go to their website. They have a paper there. Everything is laid out very well for you. So you don't, you'll never get lost doing a scoping review. Uh, so selection of source evidence, I went to databases here, right? So sc Google Scholar, Eric, um, and some of, some, 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 uh, of you might be thinking, why, go, why Google Scholar so many? Well, because uh, by the time I was collecting this data, it was very early stage of, of Gen AI, and a lot of papers are not yet published on Scopus uh, database, as you can see, just nine there. So you cannot do a scoping review just by looking at the, the, 
more distinguished databases. So you have to go uh, and look at the other literature as well that is like maybe waiting to be pre-reviewed as well. Uh, so 222 and then uh, nothing added on top of that. Records of the duplicates removed is 195 remaining and then in the 195 remaining I choose the, I filter out the ones that are non-English or non-AI focused or, or preprints of published work because you, you want the published one, right? If it's published um, then, then we take the published one. If it's just they don't have published one, then we look for preprints. So for so forth and so forth, right, basically. And that narrows down to uh, 78, and then from the 78 also take out the ones that are not AI, Gen AI focused, that are not of acceptable quality, for example. Uh, those that you read it, it's like the whole methodology section is gone. So we take out all those less quality papers, less well-written papers, um, and or, pay, or articles that are not being able to retrieve. So that leaves 41 for my uh, scoping review study. Right, and so first review question again um, in in, sh in short form key terms. So what are the key terms that have been been found in these uh, 41 papers? So uh, the thing is, they don't call themselves Gen AI all the time. They can be called AI powered language learning model, uh, natural language processing, software tools, e.g. chatbots, AI based learning tool, chatbot based learning tool. So there are a number of names for or to represent Gen AI. Uh, one thing that has never come up is AI literacy. So they never like relate AI literacy to to the key term of Gen AI uh, in the in the fine in literature. Uh, the review question number two uh, that is related to what kind of uh, language or education level. Uh, obviously, because we are looking at uh, like Google Scholar, all these most of the time it's going to be English oriented, and because we talk about language education. Uh, a lot of a lot more English papers are published than other languages. There are some Japanese ones, there are some Turkish ones as well, but most of them are English focused and also uh, EFL, by the way. And then uh, a lot of them came from higher education, uh, and we know why because that's where we can have most contact with the students. Uh, so that's very normal. Area of research, areas of research. So uh, in the 41 different studies, and I try to classify it in this such a way. So TNL, teaching and learning. Uh, general teaching and learning, there are about 22 papers talking about that. Teaching and learning policy specifically, that, that is nine. Specifically on written uh, writing, uh, specifically on assessment, uh, specifically on ethics, and one other one. Okay, so you can look at the, the overall trend um, of, the, of, the, of the literature. Most of them focus on general teaching and learning. Right, 3B uh, is the attitude towards the use of Gen AI. Um, amount of 41, 28 of them thinks it, uh, think this is very positive. Four of them think this is a mix, so can be good, can be bad. Um, balance is like they try to balance the good and the bad. So it's not exactly mixed, but you can feel that they try to three good and three bad and do that. Okay. Uh, and one, only one on negative ones, and five other ones they didn't, they didn't make any comment about, about positive, negative attitudes. So you see it's very overwhelmingly positive in this sense. Okay, now this is the fun one. Uh, potential impacts of Gen AI. So uh, this to talk about opportunities and challenges. Positive, poten potential positive impact, because at the stage it's like not, there's not a lot of studies that actually been conducted in a larger scales, not for sure empirically proven. So this is like they, they try to say this is potentially positive. Okay, uh, potentially positive impact, learning motivation, creativity, interest, learning experience, autonomy. Okay, and I think all of you somehow can feel some sort of agreement, right? You can feel it. Yeah, mostly partially agree. Okay, I, I, I think you can feel that, right? Like what the reasons are. But take a look at the second one. What are the potentially negative impact ones? Ta-da! <laughs> Potentially negative impact, learning motivation, creativity, interest, learning experience, and autonomy. And this is so funny. You know, this is so funny when I was doing this. Like, uh, there are people who argue that this is good, and then suddenly that's not good. It's exactly the same. Which means that we do need, um, you know, actual studies to back up. Summaries of the evidence. Uh, I get this is positive impact on productivity. Okay, so wait for that. This is, this one is potential, right? Potential positive negative. Uh, so people argue, scholars argue, um, can be positive, can be negative, or something like that. This one is overwhelmingly uncontested. Everybody thinks this is what Gen AI is good for. Uh, generating drafts, short essays, correct grammatical errors, refined sentences in paragraphs, facilitating ID generations, provide examples, aiding grading, 
offer feedback to students, alleviate stress amongst teachers, and save time and enhance quality of instruction. So you have more time for your teaching and improve other areas of your teaching. So nobody complained anything here. Everybody agreed. Very, very, very nice finding there. Okay. Um, ethical concerns covered. Again, I'm sure you have heard a lot about that. Algorithmic bias, plagiarism, dishonesty, inequality. Okay. You should be very familiar with it. But one of the things that uh, has not been has not been uh, researched or covered or rarely covered. Okay, ethical concerns rarely or not covered at all. Uh, data privacy or privacy uh, and security. So, for example, security breaches, hacking, misuse of students' data by third parties. Okay, that's why I think we're still okay. We're still, we're still getting that. Uh, nobody actually mentioned this. Data privacy and security in terms of how data is collected and utilized by the first parties. First parties meaning, um, so who, who owns ChatGPT? OpenAI, right? So how does OpenAI use your data? Okay, uh, Bing, Microsoft, how does Microsoft use your data? In fact, OpenAI is owned by Microsoft, right? So no, all that. nobody actually touches it, nobody actually mentions this. Uh, AI literacy, very rarely is that covered. But I also put out GNAI literacy. In, in a way, I'm not saying that GNAI literacy is, a, is different from AI literacy. It's a subset of AI literacy. Um, because the definition of AI in the first place is not very clear. Uh, even the terms are not, terminology is not very clear. Um, when we talk about AI like 10 years ago and AI today, not the same thing. Uh, so we need, to, we need to learn, we need to look into that part. And there's also a lack of GNAI literacy among teachers. So it's like, um, it's like they just, we just see teachers promoting Gen AI. This is good. Try this. Upload this. Do this. Play with this. You know, experience this. But but there's a potential danger that we're introducing things that we shouldn't be introduced in the first place. And we're introducing the to the students. We never tell them the danger of it, and they, their 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 data security everything is gone because of us. So that is a serious thing. All right. Uh, so limitation of my study here. The year span of publication. Um, I actually started sourcing from 2017 in the sense that 2017 is the year when GPT first came out. But unfortunately, it's really just till Chad GPT came out uh, in November 2022, then papers started, uh, started appearing. So um, it's very limited in a sense, 2022 to 23 July, uh, 20, 2023 July. So it's very sh very short period, which is why you know a scoping review is is appropriate because it's a very very new technology. There's not a lot of papers out there, so it's good to look at um, uh, the, the the research gaps. Empirical evidence. Uh, the literature, my literature, has selected lack empirical evidence on the effectiveness and quality of the students' work after incorporating Gen AI. So we, there are a lot of opportunities here if you if you look, have a think about this part here, and I'm going to conclude with some of the key takeaways of that. Um, we need more empirical studies to provide a comprehensive understanding of long-term, short-term effectiveness of the impact of AI. Um, we should uh, continuously, regularly investigate these uh, ethical considerations, potential limitations of the fast-changing technologies. Um, we should also look at future research focusing on specific languages, uh, specific language skills, so we can focus on writing, focus on speaking, or even other languages as well, not just English, okay? And to provide a more targeted intervention using uh, Gen AI tools. Stakeholders, teachers, students, I don't know, managers, bosses, upper level managers, uh, stakeholders engagement is crucial in shaping the implementation of the use of AI programs. I, I'm sure you know that. Uh, if your, your university supports you, gives you all the things that you need, then you can really easily um, do your research or do your teaching. So really, really uh, important to have the support from the institutions. Right, uh, conclusion, future directions. And here, is, here, here are the potential research for everybody here. You want to do research on Gen AI. Many research gaps for empirical studies, quantitative, qualitative mix, um, and uh, for action research, for example. Topic one, Gen AI for EAP. Okay, positive or negative impact. You can do pre and post surveys. That's very simple, obvious. Number two, relationships between learners, uh, EAP proficiency before and after learning to use the Gen AI. Um, this is, I think, very doable, but also need to take into the consideration that uh, your data collected is going to be just as good as your teaching about Gen AI is. The more, the better you teach, the better you know, results you get. So it's very teacher dependent. Students perceive usefulness of the feedback from Gen AI alone, then teachers alone, 
and JNI plus teacher. So you can do you can do a, like comparis, comparative studies there. Uh, you can test students' knowledge about JNI ethics. Okay, the course material designs with uh, you know, and then from there you can go to design course materials with JNI literacy. Um, this could be like a teach students as partners kind of work, um, you know, or, or any other kind of material creation, small scale, large scale. Unexpected issues or uncertainties regarding the pedagogical impact of AI because we only have like scholars, researchers saying potentially good, potentially bad, right? So uh, what else, what could be the unexpected things that pop up here? I mean, this is very, very much worth mentioning. You know, what are the things like, like the ones I mentioned, you know, teachers introducing tools to students, not knowing how dangerous they are. Okay, and so that could be some of the uncertainties that we can look into. Uh, and many, many more, obviously. So I'm just giving you a list of top possibilities for your research. And if you have, if you're going to conduct these research, don't forget to cite my paper. <laughs> All right, uh, great. Uh, so um, I, coming to the end, uh, there are these other related resources. I actually did um, did a, another presentation at UST at the, the launch of Style uh, there, and that was that was the first time. That was before before. Um, before the semester started. Uh, so 2023, May 31st. Uh, if you want to watch that, you can go to, you can scan this QR code and you can go to my YouTube channel to watch this uh, presentation. And my head is like tiny, tiny bit here, but you don't really need my, don't need to care about my face. Uh, this is a uh, Medium article talking about a, a number of different articles, including mine. So if you want to read this one, um, you can also search for that. But I, I didn't include a QR code. Uh, my apologies, but um, yeah, you can you can Google that, right? And uh, great. One last thing, and I still have a bit of time. Uh, this is one of the way, one of the reasons why you should not, never, never recommend students to upload their voices to any of the AI software. Holy crap, you guys! Nintendo just announced a new slap fest for this weekend. This weekend. Looks like my trip to the Kingdom of Hyrule is canceled. Wait, Joe, you didn't tell me you got invited to the Kingdom of Hyrule. Yeah, I was just sending over the U.S. military to help defend Hyrule from my cutie patootie Zelda. Oh my god, Joe. She's literally 17. Nah. She's actually 117. 117 in dog years. That works for me. What the hell? Anyways, Trump, can you pull up the theme for us? All right, Barack, no need to rush me. Which do you see? Power, wisdom, or courage? Well, that's easy. It's obviously not. Not again. Wisdom, courage? Are you kidding me? You guys don't know a single thing about power. Yeah, I do. You don't even have the power to last an hour without a nap, Sleepy Joe. Well, now about him. While you were busy snoozing, Joe, I managed to amass a net worth of two point five billion dollars. What? Really? How do you think you can afford his one hundred million dollar golden penthouse? Don't forget the eighteen karat gold toilet. That's disgusting, Donald. He ain't having none of that once I lock his ass up. Hey, Joe, how about you get your money up, not your funny up? Oh, snap. How are you going to come back from that one, homie? A man with money is a man with power. Okay, there you go. So you get what I mean. You know, um, of course, not, not everybody is as, is, is as famous as the, the U.S. president. Uh, but if you are, like, you know, you're, 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 you're not aware of this, or you're not aware of the danger of this, and you ask your students to upload their voices or upload their faces and do whatever 3D modeling or, or AI voices. And then one day, uh, either their bank accounts get, 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 in, get, get hacked and they, they lose their money. I mean, that losing money is what's just one thing, a small thing. But, but you know, you, your students' could, voices could be there and saying things that they don't want. And it would be very bad if, it, if you find out that's because of you telling them that this is a good thing, right? Um, so be very careful. I, I never recommend people uploading voices or pictures of themselves onto, the, onto these uh, websites. Um, definitely, like, no, no. All right. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, that's, that's all. Yeah. Um, welcome all questions, if you, if you have any. Thank you very much.